Another week, and yet another story about black holes has surfaced this week. This time, it is some 8,000 light years away in the constellation Cygnus, in a binary system V404 Cygni. And the system has been observed for a very long time, but it is behaving in a way that no one has expected. Back in 1938 and 1953, astronomers caught the system undergoing outbursts in visible light. More recently, they have managed to capture it in X-rays. The latest piece of research is set to be published in the Journal of Nature. When V404 Cygni experienced another bright outburst in 2015, lasting around two weeks, many telescopes around the world were trained on this event. And when they examined the data, they discovered that the jets coming off the black hole were behaving in a way that no one had expected. Generally, there should be strong jets extending up from the poles of the black hole. In the data, what they actually saw was the jets shooting out in different directions at different times. And this change was occurring in only a couple of hours. In order to understand this motion better, they had to adopt a different approach to observing it. Typically, radio telescopes produce an image from several hours of observation, but obviously here, the jets were moving too fast to capture it. Instead, the research has produced 103 individual images, and each image was about 70 seconds long, and then they joined them together in a movie. Now, they think that this rapidly rotation of the jets is due to the misalignment between the spin of the black hole and the material falling in. And they speculate that the inner few thousand kilometers was puffed up and wobbling during these bright outbursts. The precession is caused by gravimetric frame dragging, a prediction of general relativity. And effectively, what this means is that the black hole is distorting space-time in such a way that the accretion disk is being slowed down by this, causing a precessional wobble. Some interesting points to note about the captured images. First, the jets expand out to cover an area similar to our solar system. And the speed at which this plasma moves is incredible, covering the distance between Mars and Saturn in under 90 minutes. Now in another image from 2015, from a different uh, satellite, from the Swift X-ray satellite, they detected light echoes of X-ray from the eruption reflecting off rings of dust around the system. And it can be clearly seen that the outburst is driving the dust rings outwards, as well as the jets. But wait, I hear you say, there is no black dot at the centre. Hmm, indeed, that did get me thinking as well. From what I can gather from this image, it is taken of the same apparent scale as the other images. And if this is the case, why do we not see the effect of the relativistic jets on these dust rings? So how strong is the evidence that this is a black hole? Well, I suppose you could say that it fits their model in terms of expected behaviour to some degree. So what do we know? Well, we know it's a binary star system. As we've seen in the electric star evolution, this is common. It is common to find systems in pairs, if not more than pairs. And we know that stars periodically nova. And this is something that we've seen before and explained uh, by the difference in the incoming galactic current. Now from the optical image of V404 Cygni, we can clearly see that there is a change in the brightness indicating that it's probably a binary star system. And the orbital period of the rotation is about six and a half days. The fact that they can observe the light from one star and it dims and brightens leads them to conclude that it must be a black hole because in order for it to rotate that quickly you need to have something that has a fairly dense mass in order to cause that to happen. Now if this is a black hole orbiting around this star causing it to dim over the six and a half day period, why is it that we do not see any gravitational lensing? This object, this black hole, is moving in front of the star and therefore if we have the easiest example to show that gravitational lensing exists surely this is it and the fact that we don't see it surely must be proof that this is not a black hole the variation in the brightness could be explained in an electric universe model 
by the companion star being a being smaller in size b therefore receiving a smaller input current c having a smaller surface area across which to create tufts now could it be that periodically this current increases to its companion therefore they share it but sometimes the smaller companion receives a, a massive increase in current causing it to nova problem is how does the electric universe explain the relativistic jets remember that these jets have not been observed for long periods of time only when it is active so it is not like when we look at the active galactic nuclei where we see these relativistic jets coming out here we, we only see these jets when this thing erupts now the, the scale of the jets that are created here are quite vast so it, it does make you wonder what creates these things now in an electric universe model that the from the active galactic nuclei they explain those jets using plasmoids so where does this leave us with regard to understanding this particular beast now the first thing to note is whatever the model is it must be able to account for the variation in the light output of the companion star as well as the wobble that we see uh, in terms of its movement around the other so gravitationally we have to be able to explain the, the binary star system secondly it must be able to explain the brightening events and the additional x-ray output that happen sporadically thirdly it must be able to explain the relativistic jets and also the wobble of these jets in this case and fourthly we also need to be able to explain why the dust rings stay the same shape but will not distort the electric units may be able to answer one or two of these individually but so far i am struggling to find a hypothesis which would explain all of these at once as I said in my last video on Sagittarius Black Hole, the Electric Universe needs to be able to answer all of these questions at once and link it to a coherent model. And I'm not aware of any model that ties all of these things together, only separate pieces. It's like having a Lego set. We have all the bricks, but we have no instructions of how to put it together. Now, so far the black hole model is capable of answering all of these at once except for one of them and even though i know in my heart of hearts that the black hole model is not the right one now i am not as smart as others out there so i'm sure that there are models which potentially could explain all of those four phenomena at once now, strangely enough the episode coming out on monday in which I discuss the journey through cosmology through the eyes of Hannes Alvin, and in particular a discussion about how we've ended up in the current state of cosmology. And it is a reminder that we should always be objective and let the facts take precedence. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time. <laughs>